All right, all right, what is up, everybody? My name is Jacob Bartlett. I am the middle school pastor over at our Hamilton Mill campus. And with me today, I have my good friend. Cam Morrison, and I am the student ministry resident at the Sugarloaf campus. And so, Come Jacob, on. we say it's been over the Sugarloaf campus, and you used to be there, right? Yeah, once upon a time, once upon a once time, upon a time. long time ago. I know, but you used to say that we're the best campus in all the land. Okay, okay. Um, what do you got to say about that? I have one question. Yeah, yeah. Do you have an NCS trophy with you currently in Sugarloaf? You have it on you right now? Uh... With me, with me, yes. It's in my, it's in, in my. In backpack. a way, it's with it's, you. It's, yeah, in a way. You right. Know? When you're a champion, it's a mentality. Ooh. It's more. It's more than a moment. It's a movement. Anyways, uh, so Cam, life Brother. is good these days, right? We had football this weekend. So good. Oh my goodness. Anybody playing fantasy football out there? Dude, you know it? I am actually. We're in a league together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we get to be right. in a league together and see. It is so much fun. Feeling like everything is back to normal. Oh, taking steps. But, but if I'm being honest, I kind of just like sitting on my phone, fantasy football, or TikTok. I'm not gonna lie, I, I love TikTok. Yeah, I got come on. really, come on. really invested in TikTok over the last couple of, of months. Uh, Kim, should I show him some of my moves? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, oh, okay, okay. You can you can, maybe later, maybe later. We'll save it uh, for another time. Well, but you know what you can tell them is that you've been to McDonald's recently and you've That's got yourself right. the Travis Scott meal. Whoa. Bro, we talking Come on. McTravy patties Dude, we are talking here. McTravy patties. Woo! Let's go. Come on, barbecue sauce, a little Sprite. Come on. Okay. That's Sorry, I it. said that really weird. You did. You did. Okay, okay. But guys, here now it is time for the main event of tonight. The excellent spelling bee. Here we go, Cam. Tell them how we're going to play this. All right, guys. So the way we're going to play this game is me or Jacob is going to give them a word. Right? We're going to give you guys a word and you guys have to spell it correctly. If you do not, there's a punishment. And so we have a dozen eggs here. You know, it's just a dozen eggs. We're good. Just but uh, Jacob, tell them, tell them what the deal is. That's right, that's right. Uh, if, when we give you a word, you're gonna spell it, and if you get it wrong, uh, you grab one of these. Some are hard-boiled, some, some are, are raw, boiled. like dripping, like the egg yolk, disgusting. Anyways, and you will have to smash it on your forehead. Your forehead. All right, <laughs> on your forehead. Um, so, and, and Cam, let me go ahead and take a second to yeah. introduce uh, two of our contestants, both from the Hamilton Mill campus. We have Kaylee and we have Kylie. And here's what the audience needs to know. Uh, they are childhood best friends, and today we are pitting them against each other. Best friends since birth. But since birth. Gosh. Since the womb. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Kaylee, Kylie, would you guys introduce actually uh, each other and maybe tell us an embarrassing moment uh, that they might have? Okay, so one time we were at Dairy Queen with a group of our friends that we had just met, and Kylie thought one of the boys was cute, and Classic, she decided. I'm in the story now. <laughs> she decided to do the Blizzard challenge where you flip it upside down, and she did it in the middle of like the ordering area, and it went all over the floor in front of the guy that she thought was cute. Oh, oh man. Well, one time when I was driving, Kayla being the backseat driver that she is decided to yell at me to stop the car when I was already stopped and threw herself at my windshield. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dang. Okay, those are pretty embarrassing those, moments. Those are pretty embarrassing. Uh, I can start to feel the tension Ooh, rising tension. in the room. Uh, Kim, go ahead, call up our first contestant. That's right. All right, so first I'm going to call up Kylie to the front here. All right, Kylie, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so your first word is clafuti. Clafuti. Um, Would you like to hear the definition? Yeah, yes, yeah okay, please. here's the definition. Okay, yeah. Clafuti, a dessert consisting of a layer of fruit topped with batter and baked. Mm. Kafuti, clafuti. Okay. <laughs> Can't keep that open. Yeah, you yeah. Don't know I, I definitely don't know how to spell this. C L U. Grab an egg. Kylie, what do we okay. think? Do we think that's hard boiled or do we think that's like a yolky egg? I hope it's hard boiled. You All hope? right. You hope? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, we're going to stand over here. Yeah, we're going to take a step back. I feel like, oh. Oh, dang, it. dang it. That was, uh, that was a little that bit was... of a letdown. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Kaylee, go ahead. Come, Come up, up here. Are you ready for your word? I don't know. Are you nervous? Yes. Are you? Oh, it smells up here. Are you confident? 
Yes. Okay. Oh. It this smells is, so bad. It Ooh. does smell bad. Those are terrible. Uh, this is kind of a cupcake. Uh, pterodactyl, the dinosaur. That's the definition, the dinosaur. P. Okay. T. Okay. E. Okay. R. E. Oh. Kaylee, we are so sorry, but you got the answer wrong. Please take an egg. Endure the punishment. Here we go. Scared. Okay. It's definitely. It's hard boiled. Oh, oh, dang it. Okay, okay. okay. Two for two. Go ahead. You can put it back. All right, Kylie, will you come back up here? Round two. Here we go. You ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. That's hilarious. Gobbledygook. Would, would you like to hear the definition? I do not have the language of origin. Uh, that was not provided, but I do have the definition. It is a language that is meaningless or made unintelligible mm. by excessive use of technical terms. Can we use that in a sentence for us? I don't know what gobbledygook means, Jacob. You have the definition there. <laughs> I still don't know what it means. All right, all right, all right. So all right, I'm go. sorry, but you're gonna go, have, go ahead and have to spell this. Go ahead. Wait, what's the word? <laughs> Gobbledygook. G O B B L D. Ah, oh, there's an E uh, between the L and the D. That was close. That was close. Really you close. had a good start. You had really a good close. start. All right. Go ahead. And so, yeah, you got to smash it hard this time. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> No oh, way. that's disgusting. Oh, she put it back. Awesome. <laughs> that's for you, buddy. All right. All right. Kaylee, you're back up. You're back up. The good news is, with one of the raw eggs now having exploded, uh, the chance of you getting one of the raw eggs is, is now less. So that should make you a little bit more confident. Take the edge off. You know, you feeling better? Yes. All right. I think you're lying. <laughs> it's time to redeem yourself. All right. Here we go. Handkerchief. Handkerchief. Sure. Okay. That's really what you want to call it. You want to try to fight me right now? Handkerchief. All right. Handkerchief, because Kaylee's smarter than me, apparently. Okay. H A N K. You can correct me, but you can't spell it. All right. Go ahead. Take an egg. Smash it on your forehead. Oh. Ooh, good pick. Good pick. I feel pretty confident. You picked one that already had yolk on it. Oh. Yes. Dang. She did it again. She got away right. with it. She got, got away with it again. Kylie. I think this is rigged. You think it's rigged? You know, I, I'm sorry you feel that way. I really am sorry you feel that way. All right, this is your last round. And so I, th I think you can do this one. Come on. It's xanthosis. Mm. Definition, please. Definition. A yellow discoloration of the skin from abnormal causes. The language of origin is France. That's not true at all. But it, the word is. Yeah, Zan we have no clue. <laughs> yeah, I've we, never heard this again, word. We have no idea. Xanthosis. Okay. Um, X. Ooh, she got it. A. N. T. H. E. Oh! Close. You are so close. So close. Okay. I'm so sorry, Kylie, but you have to take another egg. I can still see the egg yolk on the top of your forehead. <laughs> it's definitely not dripping down in the in the lights at all. In the uh, <laughs> let's, let's get well, to this. Yeah, just go ahead. Okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. Wow. All right, all right. Come on, Kylie. You can win the competition here right now by getting this one right. You can win. Do you feel good about that? Ooh. Maybe. There's, there's, Still, I don't, I don't believe you. I don't. But it's there's okay. a Travis I Scott meal on the line right now. I think the I'm audience needs right. to know that. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Eudemonic. What? The word is eudemonic. What's the definition? Producing happiness based on the idea of happiness as the proper end of con conduct. Okay. Mm. U. D. <laughs> no, no, no. It is E U. It's tough. All right. It's tough. Grab the uh, egg. Has this already been done? Yeah, that one. Yes, the, the, the one that is correct has already been done. Take this one. Here we go. 
Here we go. Here we go. Please oh. be hard. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> that egg literally just pooped on the stage. <laughs> that was disgusting. Oh, man. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for playing. Thank you for being great sports about smashing eggs on your face for yeah. all of us to laugh at. Uh, really that was fantastic. That was fantastic. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. And Jake, we tell people what's going on on Instagram this week. Right. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've been doing the student pastor challenge where every week you get the chance to vote on what right. student pastor you want to do something hilarious. We had Sanders and we had Dave. Uh, and this week, I don't know what it is, maybe a belly, uh, a belly flopping competition. But I think we should vote Sanders again because he did unbelievable. And he's all of our favorites. He's, he's all of our favorites. So, guys, would you show some love to Sanders when the Instagram post goes out? And just write his name. Sanders Poe. I think it's at Sanders Poe, if I'm correct. Uh, you guys can go ahead and vote for him. At Pastor Poe. Oh, at Pastor Poe. At Pastor Poe, formerly Poe Daddy. Okay. Formerly Poe Daddy. All right, anyways, enough with that. I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Zach for worship. All right. Hey, what's up, students? Right now, we're kind of off the stage. They're cleaning it up from the egg game that they just did, which looked amazing. I'm glad I wasn't one of the students up there, though. Uh, but we're ready for worship. We're ready to jump into what God has for us. And, you know, I said this a few weeks ago in talking about raising our hands to God. You know what? When I, when I raise my hands, what I'm thinking about is when I was a child and I wanted my father, I would go up to him and raise my hands to my dad. And I would just want to be with him. And that's what we're doing when we're worshiping. We're raising our hands. We're saying, God, I just want to be with you today. And so we're going to worship and you're going to see us raising our hands and, and closing our eyes. And so I encourage you guys to do the same thing. So let's jump into worship, guys.
more aware of your presence in this place in this moment we know that you're good and we know that you're bigger than any anxiety than any fear than any circumstance you've won the victory God you're mighty and you are holy and you are good and you love us thank you God for your love Let us become more aware of your love, of your presence in this place in our hearts. We give the honor and we give you the glory that you're due. And we say all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. How good was it to worship together again? Let's get set for a great message from Pastor Sanders. It's a great time to lean in and take notes. So let's go. H12 and M12 watch parties. It is good to be seen by you guys tonight. I just wanna say welcome. My name is Sanders and I get the privilege of being the high school pastor at the Hamilton Mill campus. Now I wanna tell you right off the front end that tonight's gonna look a little bit different than some of the ones that we've done in the past. You see, normally we'll have the pastor stand up here, talk for a little bit, and then you're gonna take about a five minute break to have some discussion in your watch parties. But tonight we're gonna run straight through. So I just want you to buckle in and hang out with me for the next 15 minutes as we dive in because I think God has something to say tonight. And so before we even jump in, what I'd love to do is just take a minute to pray. You know, if we're, if we're being honest, what we want to do is just invite the Holy Spirit's presence into your watch parties, into the room tonight, and so we can talk to him and have honest conversations. So I just want you to get into a posture where you are ready to receive a word from the Lord. It's going to be a few minutes, and so let, let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Speak tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so now that we're all together and now that we're about to jump right in, I am excited because I have a question for you. Have you ever tried to do something that is just ridiculously hard? Now, I'm not talking kind of hard. I'm talking ridiculously hard. Like for me, what that is, is I have been trying for months, and I mean months, to try to get a six-pack. And it does not matter how hard I try. I cannot get a six-pack. Let me tell you why. Because I have these little things in my mouth. You might have some too. They're called taste buds, and they hate kale. You see, I think kale tastes like grass, and I don't want none of that. For me, I love French fries. I want to go to Chick-fil-A. I want to get myself some nice, crispy, salty French fries because I know, because of that, I'm never going to get abs because it's just ridiculously hard. But you see, I think in a much more real sense, when we're talking, I think there are some things in our life that are a little bit more, more ridiculously hard. See, for some of you, when you go home at night, you're having conversations with your mom or dad and you're arguing and you're fighting and you guys just can't seem to be getting along. That's ridiculously hard. Maybe the arguments are taking place between your mom and your dad and they've thrown out words like hate and divorce. And that is ridiculously hard. Or for some of you, you go to, you just walked into high school for the first time. You're in ninth grade and you're excited and you walk in in this room and this, this humongous building that you're in. You don't know any of your teachers. You don't know anybody there. You don't even know how to really study because high school is just that next level and you're not sure what to do. And that 
is ridiculously hard. But then when we take it and when we apply it to our relationship with Jesus, things get even harder. Sometimes you can feel like there might be a distance between you and God. You feel that, that man, back when I was at DIG or, or when I was at NTS, me, me and God, we were like this. We were so tight. Everything was going great. But then over the last six months or maybe over the last year, slowly you feel like you and God have drifted and you guys have split. And that can be ridiculously hard. But let me ask you a question. Is that how it's supposed to be? Are things in life supposed to be this hard? Or is life supposed to just be all lake days, 3 a.m. war zone victories, and weekend hangouts? Is it supposed to be this hard? And you see, I believe it's no and yes. You see, no, that life is not supposed to be this hard because when God first created the world, the world was, was amazing. I mean, it was perfect and, and everything was going great. But then all of a sudden, I swear, if I could go back to Genesis and meet these people, their names are Adam and Eve, I would backhand them square in the face because it makes me so furious because when the world was all perfect, Adam and Eve decided to sin. And when they did, it screwed everything up. And you see, we used to walk around in close relationship with God, but then he, I mean, he used to walk in the garden with us. But then Adam and Eve decided to sin. And when they did, it separated us. But not only that. You see, to the woman, God looked at her and he said, now you are going to have pain and childbearing. You and your husband, you're going to have relational problems and it's going to be hard. He looked to the man. He said, you're going to work the fields. And when you work the fields, it's going to be difficult. You're going to work by the sweat of your brow. And kind of like I am right now, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow and it will be hard and it will be difficult and it will be pain. Was it supposed to be like this? No. And you see, and, and God looked at man and he looked at woman and he said, and this is where everything changes. He looked at him and said, not only will you have those things, but also one day you will die. You see, that is not how God wanted it to be. The consequences of their sin, the consequences of the decision that Adam and Eve chose to make had eternal consequences. You see, but then God, and I love that statement, but God. But God in his goodness sent his son Jesus to come down to earth to die on the cross, only to raise again three days later, defeating death, not just for my sins or their sins, but your sins. And if we put our faith in Jesus, we can have eternal life. But you see, the reason that Jesus came, he did not just come so that all of our earthly consequences of sin would be taken away. No, he came so that our eternal consequences would be taken away. You see, when you put your faith in Jesus, the eternal consequences of your sin are forever taken. And I know one thing to be true, that your community group leader would love nothing more than to have a chance to pray with you and to talk more about that. And so is this the way that life is supposed to be? Are things supposed to be ridiculously hard? No, they're not. But also, yes. You see, oftentimes when we make a decision to follow Jesus, what happens is that we think in our mind that all of a sudden it's going to be like, poof, all of our struggles and all of our worries are completely gone and that we are good. Man, I put my faith in Jesus and now I am never going to have another pain, never going to have another struggle for the rest of my life. But what if I told you that that's not true and it's not what God promised? You see, we don't enter into a relationship with Jesus because we want an easy life. We enter into a relationship with Jesus because we know what Jesus did for us. And see, an easy life was never promised. And we see this in uh, John chapter 16. And so we're going to look at John chapter 16 together. But before we do, I want to help us kind of step out of our shoes. And we're going to step into the shoes of what's going on there. Step into the shoes of the disciples because Jesus is having a conversation with them. 
And see, Jesus, the way that he's talking, he's doing this intentionally. The disciples are a little confused. They're like, you know, what, are you, what, Jesus, what are you saying? They don't really get what's going on. And I think a lot of you can relate because you probably sit in your biology class and you look at your teacher like, yo, what are you saying? So I think we can get it. The disciples aren't sure what's going on. So they look to Jesus and they say, Jesus, you're speaking kind of confusing. Can you speak more clearly? And Jesus then breaks down what he's saying and makes it a lot more simple for them. See, he's telling them that one day I will leave. And the disciples are like, whoa, whoa, what do you, Jesus, what do you mean? You can't leave. You're supposed to be like king of the world. But he says, one day I will leave. I'm going to be with my heavenly father. And I got, I got some bad news for you. You see, when I do leave, you're going to be scattered. Um, things are going to go really hard. I promise you, you're going to have some trouble and you're going to have some pain. But it's okay. Don't worry. I got good news. And so let's read John 16 to find out what that good news is. Starting at verse 29. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe, Jesus replied. A time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each of you to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. And then church family, pay attention to verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Really simply put, I think if there was one bottom line that Jesus is trying to communicate here, it would be that we can have peace. Life may be hard, but we win in the end. We can have peace. Life may be hard, but we win in the end. And church family, don't lose track of how big of a deal this is. I mean, Jesus is looking at us and he's saying, that, hey, I, I, I know what your situations are and, and it's okay. No matter what you go through in this life, the hardest moments and the easiest moments, no matter what, I am telling you that you can have peace. You can have peace. And see, when we look at verse 33, we can really break it down almost into three parts, three, three promises that God is trying to communicate to us. First, he tells us that we can have peace. As I said, I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. Then he says that it'll be hard in this world. You will have trouble. But he finishes letting us know that we, believers in Christ, we win in the end. But take heart, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. That's an incredible, incredible statement. And you know, when we look at verse 33, you see, the way that Jesus communicated, it was communicated one way, but when we really study it, it's flipped. You see, the third thing that Jesus told us then becomes the first thing when we actually apply it to our lives. See, when we realize the promise that we win in the end because Jesus died on the cross for our sins and when we put our faith in him, when we recognize the fact that we win in the end, then he helps us in moments that are ridiculously hard. When we feel like we can't accomplish this, when we feel like we are drowning and we aren't going to make it, when we can remember that we win in the end, then in the moments that it is ridiculously hard, the third promise comes, which is the best promise. He tells us that we can have peace. God is a God of peace. Matter of fact, the Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. And I know that for a lot of you in here, you are saying, Sanders, look, man, you don't understand what I am going through. You don't know how hard school is right now. You don't know how hard it is to go home each and every night. You can have peace. I want to close with a story. Um, Kylie, who did the intro to this video, she's awesome. Uh, she's one of my favorite people, honestly. And one day, uh, this was not long ago, 
Kylie experienced a tragedy in her life. You see, it was just a normal day and she went to bed and her mother went to bed. And then and in the middle of the night, her mother started feeling, uh, feeling pains and having trouble breathing. So they called an ambulance and an ambulance came and then within, within hours, her mother passed away. And I remember getting a call at three in the morning, Kylie explaining to me what just happened and asking me, Sanders, can, can you come over? And I said, of course. And I remember walking in the doors at Kylie's house and I opened up the door and I see people crying. I see people angry. I see people frustrated. They're feeling a million different emotions. And I look at Kylie and I walk up to her I just give her a hug. I tell her that I'm sorry. And what Kylie said to me, I will never forget. She looked at me. She said, Sanders, I just feel bad for my family because they don't know the peace of Jesus that I know. Kylie is a high school girl. And in that moment, I realized that she has a better understanding of the gospel than I've ever had. You see, Kylie was walking through something that is harder than many of us will ever have to walk through. She said, I just feel bad for my family. They don't have the peace that I have in Jesus. No matter the circumstances that we are walking in, the promise of God is that life will be hard and that we will have troubles. But the best promise is that we can have peace. So church family, that's something I want to pray over you tonight. And before you jump in to your community groups and have more, uh, have more discussion over this, man, I would just love if I could to pray with you. And so Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for our discussion tonight. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would move in the watch parties, God. Would you bring peace where there's troubled situations? Where there's anxiousness, I declare peace. Where there's fear, I declare peace. And God, I thank you that in this life we do have troubles, Lord, but we know that we can rely on you and that you are a good God and the Prince of Peace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, what a great message from Pastor Sanders. But we're not done yet. It's time to jump in with our community groups and get ready for discussion.
you looking through the window instead of looking in that mirror. A certain amount of, of what comes out of you is just exploration, you know. A lot of it's just trying to solve the riddle of life.